Hello, what's up guys? Panzer here, and today I'm taking a look at Toy Soldiers Complete. Well, it's a game that's not really complete yet. Uh, it's, a, it's a game in early access, so I'm basically doing a preview of it right now, but I'm going to try and let you know, is it any good? I'll, I'll try to let you know exactly what that's all about, really. It's a game that has potential, and um, right now it's in early access, so... It's definitely not going to be complete yet. As you can see right here on the main screen, it is showing the first thing flashing up there. Toy Soldiers coming soon. And that's actually a major part of the game that isn't actually there yet. Because it's not actually been implemented yet. So why am I actually taking a look at this game? Well, I picked this up on Early Access earlier, as I said. And uh, it's quite intriguing, actually. Because as the name suggests, Toy Soldiers, it is actually a game about, quite literally, Toy Soldiers. Now, they're not the green plastic army men, as you might see. But if you're watching the, the whole carnage that's going on in the background right now, you're actually noticing these guys running around. They seem to sort of spaz out when they die. Well, that's actually in, it looks to be intentional, actually, because they're supposed to be little plastic army men. But uh, the sort of kind of die-cast or um, wargaming models that you might imagine. So this game, it has a mouse-driven menu. Uh, but don't be fooled, it's not entirely a PC game. Not from what I can tell, anyway, because it does support controllers. Now, you've got a bunch of graphic settings down here. Not much that you really have to tinker around with because it doesn't seem to be overly graphically intensive, but it is has decent graphical fidelity actually, so it doesn't actually look all that bad, which I'll show you just in a second. But one thing I do want to show you is while it has controller support, and you do you are able to change a number of controls down here. For example, you can set normal invert and all that. But the game hasn't quite decided what it wants to be yet. Does it want mouse and keyboard or does it want controller? Because although you have fully rebindable keys as well for your mouse and keyboard, it gives you the prompts in the game as uh, sometimes in controller and sometimes as keyboard, like what you're seeing um, right there. And as you just noticed, it also has a how to play section, so it's a little bit about a tutorial section, although you don't really need to read all that because you can kind of figure it out from just playing. Now of course we're not going to be going into the coming soon section because it's not there, so we're going to Toy Soldiers Cold War, which as you can imagine is the uh, US versus the Soviets. So we're going to go into that and beat some commies up. Uh, there are a couple of DLCs down here, but I want to avoid kind of those and I want to avoid the uh, campaign as well because of any uh, possible story in that. There is a versus mode. Uh, it seems to support at least local multiplayer, and uh, I think it supports online multiplayer through Steam as well. So as you can see up there, there is an option for a player too as well. But we're going to go into uh, survival mode, which is basically an endless wave sort of survival mode. And you might be wondering why in saying endless wave. Well, aside from a few different uh, multipliers and um, well, not multipliers, but, you know, modifiers to the game modes that you might see down here in the form of lockdown, hardcore, and all that, which gives you different ways of playing. The classic mode is an endless survival. It's not a first-person shooter. It's not a third-person shooter, either. What it is, actually, is a tower defense game. Now, you're probably wondering, well, well what interest is that in tower defense games? Tower defense games are normally, you know, something that you'd see on your mobile. Not entirely, because this is actually quite a... I wouldn't say it's a very good tower defense game, but it is competent, and it is a very nice looking one. I mean, look at this map right here, as we're loading it. I'm going to jump straight into playing it, because the game doesn't give you any time whatsoever to start. It shows off round one with a timer, but actually nothing really happens, because it will almost immediately switch over to round two once these bunch of infantry die. But you see, I can place down towers and stuff on these little platforms, and I can put anti-tank or um, machine gun nests if I want to. Uh, there's also the option for mortars and um, these bug sprayers as such under the makeshift section, which is pretty cool. But why, you know, like I was saying it's toy soldiers, right? So these are all actually supposed to be toys, and what you're actually playing is in a you're playing in a big sandbox or uh, like a playset. It's a big wooden box actually. So all of these are actually supposed to be toys. They're highly detailed toys, but you know they're mostly toys. So you can see right here I've got the, like the makeshift and the machine guns and mortars and all that. And it's very simple, it's just left click to, to open up the menu, and you just sort of left click wherever you want to place it. Now there are vehicles that you can control as well, which I'll get onto in a second. And you can see right here, these are the bigger platforms, so I can put something like an artillery gun down there. And you can't put that on one of the smaller pieces, uh, because for obvious reasons that's probably they're limiting you 
not that you can do that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as long as you can afford it, you can just basically put any towers that you want. Now, as you can imagine, this being a tower defense game as well, that you can actually um, upgrade your towers on that. You're not wrong. You can actually do that. Uh, every tower has, uh, if I remember correctly, it's three, le three, the three levels of upgrades, uh, which actually give you a visual upgrade as well as a stat upgrade, so it's very nice attention to detail there. And you can take control of any of these towers as well and shoot for yourself, so if you think the AI is being a bit stupid and shooting at the wrong sort of targets, you can take over and shoot for yourself. Well, the only qualm I have with this is that you start off with an M2 Browning, which as we know is a 50 caliber machine gun. But if you upgrade it, it upgrades to two 7.62 M60s, which I don't know to me, that seems a bit like a downgrade to me. You might get two of them, but it's a smaller caliber, so... Rightfully, that should actually mean that it's less effective, but yeah, whatever. The fact that they actually have that to begin with anyway is a pretty nice option as well. And of course, your anti-tank stuff can be upgraded as well. And uh, some of the stuff actually looks pretty extreme. Uh, in particular the artillery, which we don't get to see in this match, unfortunately. So you can see we can zoom right in, and you can see the number of detail, actually. Now bear in mind, your towers can actually take damage, so over time you will actually need to start repairing them. And uh, you'll, you'll see the, you know, some of the vehicles actually do start shooting at them straight away. Now I haven't noticed the infantry attack um, the towers straight up, but I've noticed a lot of the vehicles seem to do that, especially tanks, and you want to avoid those. Now I'll show you this vehicle that I've got down here as well. I'll just quickly put down an uh, AA gun because we're about to be attacked. There's one of the things you got to remember. That this game actually there's um, bombers and uh, cargo planes that come over and do power drops on you. So they drop the commandos and stuff over on there. And there's no way of defending that uh, against that unless you have an AA gun. And of course having sufficient AA guns, it's, it's kind of a niche thing really. Kind of like if you ever played Command and Conquer and had to put SAM sites and stuff down. Yeah, it was always very situational, as if your enemy was actually going to use aircraft or not, so... It's kind of a gamble, but you can basically only place them on the big uh, spots, so, you know, you're kind of having to choose. Now, what I'm showing you right here is one of the vehicles that you can actually use. I've seen another map that actually has a tank on it, uh, but this one is the uh, helicopter. Uh, you do get different ones depending on the map they're on. I was on another map that had a uh, Apache. Uh, this one uh, seems to be a Huey attack helicopter, but it seems to do the same thing. You got machine guns, you got rockets, and they do work really well against basically everything. I mean, sometimes uh, against some of these special enemies, like the boss enemies, it seems to be one of the most effective ways of actually taking them out, or sometimes the only way of taking them out, depending on how you set yourself up. So it might seem a little bit overpowered, but if you're no looking at the bottom left of the screen, you'll notice that there is actually a battery meter, and there's a good reason for that because otherwise you'd be in this thing forever, so you actually do have to land it. And in, in the case of helicopters, you have to land it right on the helipad. So you see right here, I dropped it off down there, and it shows it's inactive, so it'll actually explode if I left it there. What I've actually got to do is bring it back to the battery recharge and actually land it there. See a battery warning coming up right now. And it's showing press B to exit. I'm not even using a controller, and it's telling me to do that. The button is not B, by the way, it's, ex it's escape, but yeah. So while it's down there, it's recharging, it's not usable to me. Well, the one thing to take note that even if the battery isn't running out, I can't actually use it if I land it again because there's a cooldown cooldown period, so I do have to actually wait. So that's one of the things is that you you do have it balanced out by the fact that you have to be very strategic about when you actually use it, and you got to be very very good at actually using it when you when you take control of it. But like I said, there are some maps that actually do have tanks and stuff on them that you can control, and one map in particular has a tank and a helicopter, so you could actually alternate between the two almost indefinitely, so it makes it a little bit too easy in that case. But you can see right here, I haven't upgraded any of my towers, so uh, we're pretty much going to lose this. But the objective basically, as you would expect with any tower defense game, is kind of just keep them out of your um, your base, basically. But that's basically it, really. It's a, it's a tower defense game, and it's competent. It really is. There's nothing offensively bad about it. In fact, it, it does look decently nice as well. It's one of the most cinematic tower defense games I've ever played. So, it is definitely worth checking out on those grounds. But I do want to show you one other thing that they have included. In case you ever get bored with playing tower defense, because, you know, you bought a tower defense game. But if you do ever get bored with the whole tower defense aspect, there's actually a whole bunch of uh, mini games. So, like I was saying, if you ever get bored of the actual main focus of the game, be it, you know, the campaign or be it online multiplayer or whatever, you can actually get into this bunch of mini games. There's a whole bunch of them right here. 
The only qualm I really have with this is the fact that the mouse doesn't actually seem to work very well at this particular menu. When you scroll up and down, it sort of switches really quickly. I'd much rather use the mouse wheel for that sort of thing. But no, it doesn't seem to control very well down here. So of course, some of the little things they probably do need to work out as the you know before the game gets released. It's kind of work on the whole menus and stuff. But there's a whole bunch of them. And they all seem to be quite different. So I'm going to pick one that's called uh, Fly Swatter. And uh, that's actually one of the mini games that we can play. And what it does is actually it gives you control of an AA gun. And in this case, it's actually a Soviet AA gun. Yes, you can play as the Soviets if you really want to. And uh, you can see, yes, yeah, so keeping with the whole theme and stuff, it's actually sitting there on a desk with a... Uh, looks like a soda can and a cereal and... Um, an old Macintosh, maybe, or something. An old computer, really, down there. Yeah, so, like I said, very hi highly stylized. But, of course... This game as well, you know, this mini game, it's uh, supposed to be a bit of a comedy thing as well, you know, you can control this AA gun, and you got to shoot down as many flies as you can. And what this is actually, this is actually one of those pattern shooters, so you've got to shoot them up and you've got to follow the pattern of the actual flies coming out and try and get the most, the highest score possible. You've got infinite ammo, so you can just sort of fire all the way, but you've got to kind of plan your shots as you go. And there's these little golden flies that you can kind of hit as well. Uh, these... Yeah, they give you extra score and everything, and the main point is to kind of keep your combo multiplier going up. I mean, it's not, you know, the main focus of the game, but this is pretty decent for what it is. I mean, I've seen entire games based on this entire sort of pattern following recognition sort of thing. And those normally go for a much higher price, so... The fact that they have this sort of mini games in here anyway is actually pretty interesting. Now, I would have liked to see sort of like a um, multiplayer aspect with this as well, which I'm hoping that something they're actually going to do, because this could work out to be quite a fun little mini-game for multiplayers as well. Kind of along the li same lines as what Pokemon Stadium did with their mini-games, by having it sort of like a party aspect with um, other players. So even if it's a local multiplayer, I it has potential. Thing, of course. Ooh, fly right there in the face. But yes, so you can see, you know, just a little distraction for the main thing. Uh, maybe tying with a sort of leaderboard system, and you 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 got something good going on down here. But overall, you know, it's it, it's a competent tower defense game, but it's got a whole bunch of other content in there, and you can see the slots for other DLC then and, and stuff that it got planned. Which, from what I can tell, at least they give you two of them free right off the bat if you purchase it now. So that's not too bad. I mean, it's a deal sweetener. But how much does all of this cost? And you know, now that you've seen that, is it any good? Uh, well definitely I want to try out the multiplayer before I can give you an adequate verdict. I probably will put up another video if I can actually test out the multiplayer, but this is actually a really competent game for what it is, and to be fair to the developers, I mean even though it's incomplete, there's so much content down here, you could actually get started playing with it already. And uh, it's going for $9.99 on Steam, that's $9.99 US, and or whatever your regional equivalent currency is. And for that kind of price, I'd say, yeah, you know, that's actually a bargain for what you're getting. Uh, it's a comp like I said, it's a competent tower defense game with a lot of little mini games and pretty good content, and it's not bad looking. You know, there's attention to detail, and it is good looking for what it is. So, yeah, well worth checking it out. Go and check it out on Steam right now. I'm going to leave the link down in the description below. $99.99 on Steam. This is uh, this has been Panzer taking a look at Toy Soldiers Complete, now in early access. Go and check it out, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Come on,